Hello, today I have with me Phil Caldwell, Chief Executive of fuel cell technology company Ceres Power. Hi Phil. Hi there. Uh, there's been a fresh wave of interest in clean technology companies like yours and, and for those who don't know, could you explain in simple terms who Ceres Power is and what it does? Yeah, so uh, Ceres Power is a leading solid oxide um, fuel cell technology company. What, what, what does that mean? So we develop a very high efficiency fuel cell that is the most efficient way to generate power from any fuel. And it can be everything from low carbon to zero carbon and zero emissions technology. And its applications are numerous. It goes into stationary power, it can go into transportation. And if you run it in reverse, it can also generate green hydrogen. Um, we, we work with some of the world's leading organizations uh, like Bosch in Germany, uh, Doosan in South Korea, Wei Chai in China. And our purpose as a company is really to provide uh, businesses with the, the technology they need to address climate change. So we're all about clean energy technology. Now you have a different business model to rivals like ITM Power and others. What's the difference and is your approach better? Um, I, I wouldn't say better. I've got huge respect for uh, companies like ITM. Um, we, but we've, we've taken a, an approach which we've taken from the chip industry, so people might be familiar with ARM. Um, and what we believe is at Ceres, we've got a very unique technology. Nobody makes fuel cells in the same way that we do, using low-cost steel, low-cost ceramics. Um, and because it's highly differentiated it, it, and, and protected by very significant IP, we're able to operate on a licensing business. And the advantage of that is, um, one, it's a very high margin uh, business model. So we generate margins uh, in our just recent results, 67%, whereas a lot of players in the industry are in that 20 to 30% gross margin. And also we really like this model because we get to partner and scale the business um, simultaneously in different applications and different geographies. So at the same time we're working, let's say, in transportation in China with Wei Chai, we're working uh, with Bosch in Germany on stationary power. We're also in the South Korean market with Doosan in, in power systems for shipping and utility scale. So it enables us to, to really address multiple markets uh, from the same core technology base and do what we're best at, which is develop the core technology and leverage the capabilities of highly skilled global players like Bosch, for example. Well, look, many governments are committing to net zero emissions. Uh, and, and you say in your recent results that many of the existing players that are active in the power markets are examining their technologies and how well equipped they are to make this transition. Now, why should they choose Ceres technology and not a rival technology or provider? Um, it, it, it all become, it all comes down to what's, what's the best technology for that particular application. And, um, we are particularly strong in stationary power because we, we have amongst the highest efficiencies out of any of the technologies available. And because of our unique way of actually producing and manufacturing fuel cells, we have something that's highly scalable and, and a low cost path. So, um, it's really driven by our, our partners um, and they are very sophisticated engineering and equipment manufacturers, you know, so companies like Bosch, for example, they spent over a year deep dive into the technology due diligence before they, they select uh, a company or a technology like Ceres. A uh, similar approach with the Japanese, I think we're the only non-Japanese fuel cell on sale in Japan now. And, and that tells you a lot about um, not just the, the quality of our technology, but also the quality of our people in terms of our, our engineering and our, our, our skill sets. It's a growing market. There's likely to be um, you know, plenty of business to go around. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, I think there's a, there's a misconception in clean tech that there's, you know, I often get asked by investors, which technology is going to win? And, you know, that's kind of, it's, it's just flawed. I mean, if we're going to tackle climate change in the time frame that we need to, you know, you might have heard this phrase, we're going to need every tool in the box. And that means we're going to need 
renewables, we're going to need batteries, we're going to need fuel cells, we're going to need electrolyzers, we're going to need storage. All of these technologies must come to play because they all have a role in this, this energy system of the future. Um, so, um, and if you think about the, the size of that opportunity, you know, if you think about hydrogen is, is talked about as being the fuel of the future, that you're talking about going from something like 50 million tonnes of hydrogen today, mainly fossil based, to 500 million tonnes of hydrogen required to, to achieve uh, um, no more than a one and a half degree C uh, temperature rise in, by 2050. So you've got the clean tech um, sector has, has significant scale up uh, that has to happen in the coming decades. And that's a huge business opportunity for, for companies like Service. You partly answered my next question, actually. I was going to say it's, it's been over a decade since the, the clean technology sector uh, was last this popular. Um, really want to know, is this, do you think the boom is sustainable? Why are things different this time? And, and what will be the catalysts that justify the current um, share price valuation and generate further share price gains for shareholders? Yeah, I think it's, um, to answer your question, it, it, it is sustainable. Um, I've, I've been in fuel cells now for 18 years. Uh, so I, I've saw the first wave of interest in clean tech, the back end of that first clean tech, tech bubble kind of, and then where we are today. And I would summarize it as it was technology push. When I first got into fuel cells, we were trying to push fuel cells into applications uh, where people, big companies didn't really need them. Um, and then what's happened is, is, is a couple of things. You're getting huge disruption of existing industries. You've got renewables um, becoming the cheapest form of energy available and totally disrupting conventional utilities. You've got electrification coming in, totally disrupting conventional transportation. You've had regulations come in on the back of diesel gates. You've got air quality issues. And now we've got the, the very urgent targets on, on climate change. Clean tech version one didn't have any of that um, macro geopolitical kind of factors associated with it. It was very much technology push. Now you've got huge demand um, and, and that demand has intensified, I would say, in the past year to 18 months because uh, everybody now, all the developed nations have big incentives post COVID for a green recovery. You've got uh, Korea with huge incentives around hydrogen and fuel cells. Uh, China committing to uh, being uh, carbon neutral by 2060. And now uh, the European Union with huge targets on, on hydrogen and fuel cells. So those policy decisions, plus the disruption of conventional industries, now mean that the private sector is investing more than ever in bringing these new technologies to market. And I've mentioned some of our partnerships, but you're seeing that all across the sector. So, and then finally, institutional money is now flowing in, 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 in the shape of ESG type money. So you have this perfect storm of uh, it's must do agenda. Um, it, it's, it's now a, it's a political agenda as much as it's commercial. There's big disruption, there's a huge commercial agenda. And now you've also got the capital finally flowing in that can really make a difference. So um, it, it's, it's here to stay. Um, in term, your question about valuations, yeah, sure, there's been an increase, a rapid increase in valuations of, of companies like Sarah's where, we, you know, are, are, are emerging as, as one of the leaders in these kind of technologies. I think that's because there's something of a scarcity of these kind of companies. Um, and really, for, for us now, it's about delivery and growth, because you, I think uh, to justify these kind of valuations. You, it, we're, we're a technology business, we're a tech company. It's common in other industries. You see um, you know, a lot of excitement around the growth potential of these companies and we have to fulfill that.